everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet the Autumn Skies Shawl. This is a beautiful shawl, and I've only used one yarn cake of the Lion Brand Mandala yarn, and I'll get to that in just a moment. But as you can see, it's crocheted in a very easy lace pattern, some kind of split shell stitches, almost like a double V stitch that I've used before in other projects. I just really love this stitch. It gives a lot of nice texture, and I've used a self-striping yarn in some really lovely fall colors, perfect for the season. And it's a very nice weight and it's super soft as well. The finished shawls measures about 24 inches tall from the bottom point up to the top. This is where the back of your neck would be. And then from side to side where you would wrap it around your body, if we were to measure along the top edge of our triangle, is about 50 inches. However, I'm gonna show you later on in the video how you can simply work more rows of the pattern to get your shawl wider and taller if you like. And I use every last bit of the yarn cake I'm gonna show you next. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a ruler or a tape measure is helpful for this project to measure as you go along. You'll also need a 5.5 millimeter eye crochet hook. And the yarn that we're gonna be using is called Mandala from Lion Brand Yarn. Now I just did a yarn 101 for this yarn, so if you wanna learn more about this yarn, check it out. This is really nice yarn. It's very soft, comes in a lot of pretty colors. But if you need to substitute yarn, let's look at the yarn label here. Look for something that is a three or a light on the yarn weight scale and recommends an H crochet hook. Now, like I mentioned before, we're gonna be using a little bit larger of a hook, one size up, the 5.5 millimeter eye hook. But if you look for a yarn that recommends the H hook, you'll be just fine when you're substituting yarn. I chose to go up a size because I want my shawl to be very drapey. So it's gonna give us a little bit more drape and kind of open it up a little bit. However, feel free if you're not getting the look you like to kind of experiment with hook sizes if you're not happy with this hook size that I'm gonna be using. And this shawl is very easy because as you work more rows, it will grow wider and taller. So you can just simply work more rows till you get the size that you like. But to get the drape that you like, the fabric of the piece, you might wanna experiment with hook sizes and that's what I did to get the drape I was after. So something I really like about these cake yarns is that they pull from the center outward and because they're flat on the top and the bottom, they just stay on the table, which is really nice. So to begin, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. So give yourself a little tail Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind that loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop, and go ahead and tighten. Next, we're going to chain seven. We're going to be making a kind of like a rounded bottom triangle, like an upside down triangle with a rounded bottom. So we're gonna be working upwards and outwards as we work each row. So what we wanna do, once again, is chain seven. So to make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so here is our starting chain. And make sure you do your chain a little bit on the loose side, just so things don't kind of roll into themselves. All right, so let's begin row one. We're gonna work row one and row two, and then we'll just repeat row two for the rest of the pattern. So super easy pattern to memorize very quickly. Okay, so what we're gonna do is in the fifth chain from the hook, so this loop here does not count. Count one, two, three, four, and five. So this chain right here, the fifth chain from the hook, we're going to work two double crochet, a chain one, and two double crochet, all in the same chain, okay? This will give us our first fan. So to make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the chain, bring up a loop, you'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops, okay? So we're gonna make one more double crochet into that same chain. And then what we're gonna do is chain one, and then still in that same chain, make two more double crochets. If you're just starting out with crochet, anytime feel free to back up the video a little bit and see things over and over again until you feel like you've mastered the stitch. Okay, so our first fan is created. So when you put lots of stitches in one area, it, it naturally wants to fan out. So that's what is gonna create our fans. 
So then we're going to skip a chain, and in that very last chain that we have here, we're gonna do the same thing. So work two double crochet, one and two, and then chain one, and then two double crochet, all in that same chain, that very last chain. Just like that, okay? Now let me get a little bit more yarn out of here. So here is row one. It doesn't look like much now. It just looks sort of like this rounded rectangle type shape. But what we're gonna do as we work more and more rows, it's gonna start opening up and really displaying itself and then later display some of these colors, okay? So row two, we're going to chain three. One, two, and three. And then we're gonna turn our work, okay? So in the chain one space that we created in the last row, remember we did two double crochets and then a chain one and then two more double crochets? That chain one in the center, that chain one space, locate that in this row so we can see right here we have a chain one space. So our fans will be stacked. So in that chain one space, we're going to work one of our fans, okay? So remember our fans were two double crochet, one and two, and then a chain one, and then two double crochet. Super easy. This looks, when you're finished this project, this will look a lot more complicated than it is. This is just really basic stitches. Okay, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop over to our next fan. See, this is the side of the other fan, but here's our next fan. Once again, in that chain one space, we're gonna work another fan. So remember, our fan is two double crochet, one, and two, then a chain one, and then two double crochet. Now to finish off the row, if you were to put just one double crochet to finish off this row, you would get a very vertical shape. But we wanna make a, like a triangular shape that opens out. So in the turning chain space, remember we did the chain three and turn, that creates a space called the turning chain. Okay, so in this turning chain space, we're going to work our last fan of the row. So let me grab a little bit more yarn. And I gotta say as a side note, I have a real fondness for gray yarn. I'm really loving this gray right now. Okay, so in the turning chain space, work one more of your fan. So two double crochet, one and two, chain one, and then two more double crochet, one and two. So still, it's not going to look like a whole lot right now, but as we work, see this little tail will kind of indicate the bottom. So as we work, it's going to just keep expanding, okay? So to finish your shawl, you're just going to be repeating row two over and over, the row we just did, just over and over and over and over again until your shawl is as wide and as tall as you would like it to be. So let's work one more row together because each row you'll be adding more fans to the row and that's what causes it to expand. So once again, we're gonna be repeating row two. So go ahead and chain three, one, two, three, turn your work, and then in that chain one space, work a fan. I'll go a little faster in this row. If you wanna see row two slower, just back up the video a little bit and you can see it a little bit slower with more explanation. Chain one, two double crochet, one and two, okay? Hop to the next chain one space and work your next fan. Double, two double crochet, chain one, and two double crochet. One and two, just like that. Go over to the next fan. See, we, we have an extra fan on our row. And that's what's gonna cause this to expand outward and upward, okay? So once again, two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. Okay, and then once again, same thing we did before to finish off that row, locate that turning chain space. Now the fans want to push outward. So it might cause your turning chain, see how it's kind of on its side? You might just have to kind of feel for it and kind of redefine it a little bit. So right into that turning chain space, work one more fan. So two double crochet, one and two, chain one and two double crochet, one and two. Okay, 
So we can kind of straighten things out and you'll get a little bit with these fans, you'll get a little bit of, let me remove my hook for just a second so I can explain this to you. You'll get a little bit with these fans of a scallop along the top edge and that will, once your shawl is finished, let's say this is giant and you can wrap it around yourself, it'll create a nice little scallop across the top, okay? So just keep repeating row two over and over and over until your shawl is as tall and as wide as you would like it to be. I'm gonna keep working my row two. Again, if you need to see row one or row two once again, just back up the video a little bit and do that as many times as you need to do in order to really master this. But I guarantee you'll just work a few rows and you'll have it memorized in no time. So I'm gonna keep working my row two and then we'll rejoin in just a moment and I'll show you how to finish everything off. Okay, so I'm just working that very last stitch of the row and I don't think I have quite enough yarn to go forward and make more rows. So I'm gonna just finish it off here. Now, as you can see, we have a beautiful display of colors. It's very earthy and very much like a landscape or a sky. So what we're gonna do next is take our scissors and you can go ahead and cut the yarn and then fasten off. Now this yarn that you have left over, if you have a little bit like I do, you can use this uh, for some scrap projects or some stuffing if you're filling something also. So what we're gonna do next to finish up our shawl is to just go ahead and weave in the ends. So go ahead and grab your tapestry needle, thread your tapestry needle, and because this is a striped project, you'll want to keep your, this. I have a, happen to have a gray tail where I left off, you'll want to weave this in to the gray section only, just so you won't be able to see it. It'll blend in much nicer if you stay in that color area. Okay, so go in one direction with your tapestry needle, and then you're just gonna come right back in the other direction with your yarn tail. And then go ahead and trim that. You can kind of straighten things out a bit. And that tail has been taken care of. Next, we have one at the bottom where we began our project. So what we're gonna do is thread this one in as well. And this one also coincidentally is gray. And we'll just make sure we just stay in that same gray section of our shawl or whatever color you happen to have. Sometimes these cake yarns with this self-striping will start and end on different colors than you may see here. Okay, so I just went in both directions with the tail and then I can just simply trim and our shawl is complete. And it looks absolutely stunning. It's ready to wear. Now, if you use natural fibers like wool or alpaca or something like that, you can block your shawl as well. And it might allow you to sort of open things up a bit like that. But if not, you know, uh, this is acrylic yarn. So um, I'm gonna just kind of leave it as is. But you can also block your shawl and it'll make it grow a little bit too. Just bear in mind with that. So that is how you crochet the Autumn Skies Shawl. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again. Bye.